Uh, hello, this is Stephen Cook with Cooksaw Manufacturing. Uh, we're picking up on a, a series that we started last week uh, of uh, things that give you better blade life uh, on your bandsaw mills. This is the 22nd of uh, June 2017. Happens to be my 33rd anniversary today. So married to the same lady for 33 years. It's been good. Uh, we've also been going through, it's real windy today. Uh, we got a tropical storm Cindy has just come up. We're about 75, 80 miles from the coast uh, or from the Gulf of Mexico. And so you may see a little bit of wind going on here today, but it's a nice day anyway. But I want to talk uh, <clears throat> about four things that come to mind uh, when we start talking about the band wheels. And there are other videos that we've done that, that mention specifics and, and uh, uh, specifically how to align band wheels and all that. And all that is part of this. But I want to start by talking about the size of the band wheels. And if you can see here, we've got a 19 inch band wheel, uh, a 26 inch band wheel, and then a 30 inch band wheel. And uh, these are wheels that we use on our, on our uh, sawmills. And uh, we sell these wheels to people who want to retrofit other sawmills. Uh, and when you hear some of the advantage of these, you may want to do that. And then there's people who want to build sawmills. And so, uh, but the, the, the thing about band wheels first is the size. Now we, we use different sizes for different mills for certain reasons and we've talked about that. It has to do with can you, can you pull the mill down the road and those kind of things. But the size of the wheel is important as well because of uh, when you do pi r squared and figure out uh, how much uh, footage there is in the circumference, this, this wheel, 19 inch wheel, has to turn more rounds to get the same feet per minute than the 26 and then same thing uh, this uh, 30 inch wheel turns less rounds per minute to get the the feet per minute that we want the bandsaw blade to turn we found a little slower is better than faster there's a threshold where you can get too fast and and it causes you problems and we'll talk about that later but because um, uh, this 19 inch wheel is smaller uh, if I'm going to turn the same feet per minute as this 26 inch wheel I've got to spin it faster and having that wheel in perfect roundness is, is so critical. If you've got to spin uh, uh, 700, 800 RPM with this wheel as opposed to 500, 600 RPM, and I'm just throwing out numbers there, but it would be slower here, well that wheel is going to come around, and if it's out around, it's going to hammer. It's going to hammer. And then if you get two of them doing that, uh, where they get out around, and then they, they start yanking on that blade. And then sometimes you'll see they'll get back in round and they run smooth. I've mentioned that before in other videos. What that does is causes vibration. Vibration on the, the blade is, um, is, is an enemy. It's an enemy to the blade. It can't stand to be vibrating up and down. I've seen wheels years ago <clears throat> when we would use uh, different types of wheels, belted wheels and things like that. And you look at the blade and this blade is uh, 42 thousandths. Uh, just for quick reference, uh, 62 and a half thousandths is a sixteenth. So, so this, this blade is less than a sixteenth thick, but I would look at it while it was running and it looked like it was an eighth inch, maybe, maybe a little bit wider than an eighth inch, eighth inch thick. That's vibration doing that. It's happening so fast that it looks like it's thick. Having your wheels ground and matched and mated pairs with the shaft, that makes that smooth and it gives you much better blade life. We've had people pulling their hair out because they were breaking, breaking blades, breaking blades. And this solved a lot of problems. Roller guys can come into play and other things we'll talk about later. But, but this is important, that you have accurate wheels. Wheels that are used that are just pulleys, they'll look like this here, but they'll have a groove and they're, we call them pulleys a lot of times, or they're, they're sheaves, and you put belts in them. What happens is they, uh, when they machine this, they will, they will hook this in three places a lot of time with an air or even hydraulics, and it comes out and they machine this outer edge. That's why we end up having to redo them ourselves. They'll machine this outer edge, but the pressure was in here. And if you put enough pressure, I don't know what pressure they put on it, but if you put a thousand pounds right here and right in the center of these welds or in the center uh, between these spokes, you can actually press that thing out, 10, 15, 30 thousandths maybe. 
they machine it when they release it it goes back and you get three bumps on that we've laid, we've put them on machines with dial indicators right here and spun them and you can see three distinct spots they're not made for band wheels but they're used for them and I understand they will work but the, if you're going after solving uh, every piece of uh, <laughs> the problem for for blade life that is an issue. Another thing, and I meant to bring one out, but uh, the V-belt that you put in the sheave, uh, they're spliced. Now, not, they're not one on top of the other. They're actually cut and spliced together. And they do a pretty good job most of the time. But uh, again, we're talking uh, 15 thousandths and up is, is getting pretty detrimental to a band blade. And so uh, if you check that we are, or that uh, uh, belt itself, a lot of time at the splice, there'll be just a little bit of a bump there. 15 thousandths is not a lot. And so that, in addition to if it's at a different spot or in the wrong spot compared to where it was machined, can give you a little bit more uh, bump, a little bit more vibration, a little more out of round, and, and it causes that vibration um, on that band blade. And that is, uh, is detrimental to your, to your life of your blade.